Hey there, this is Mo Fine, and today we're going to learn about displacement maps. So what I got here is a photograph of Hillary and Mark holding up a giant homemade movie screen. This is a virgin screen. It's never had anything projected on it at this point when this photograph was taken. Anyways, Mark built this screen for the Tumbleweed Film Festival, and... Um, what I wanted to do is once we got it up there, we just were checking it out. I thought it'd be kind of fun to watch a movie or at least project something like Tumbleweed Film Festival on it, like that. But um, as it was, it was pretty windy, and Mark said that the uh, wind would make the screen act like a sail, and anybody holding onto it would drift away, um, and that wouldn't be very good. So um, we didn't have any time to, to do any kind of projection or watch a movie this day. So what I did is the next best thing is I took a photograph of it and I brought it into Photoshop. And then I was like, wow, this is kind of boring. I don't want to put it up like this on uh, Facebook. So I'm going to actually put the Tumbleweed logo on it. But I'm going to want the logo to look like it's organically part of the screen. It's going to have to take on the texture of it. So um, the first thing you want to do is create an image map. And um, what you do is you duplicate your background copy and uh, give it a name. I'm going to call it map. And uh, you want to turn your what's going to be your map black and white. So you go to uh, image. I uh, make sure the map is highlighted in the layers palette. Image, adjustments, hue and saturation. And I'm going to just take all the saturation out to eliminate the color. And then say OK. Next thing I want to do is like check, take a look at the channels of, of, this, uh, of this layer and see which one is the most contrasty. So I hit blue and... I hit green, and to tell you the truth, I've been over this a few times. I really don't see a difference in the ch contrast of the channel. So I'm just going to stick with red for now, and um, then go back to the layers and just put a slight blur on um, this layer. Uh, blur, a Gaussian blur, and uh, 1.0 is fine. You can mess around with yours, whatever your background is, um, whatever fits what it is, whatever it is you want to do. So, um, next thing is, okay, I got my map, and I'm going to need this in a little bit so my text can reference it and take on the texture of the screen. So what we want to do is just save it for a little later. So you go save as and you save it as a Photoshop file and we'll just call it map of the screen 3. And then save it. Okay so that's off and a nice make sure you know where you're putting it because you will be referencing it pretty soon. And now I'm just going to trash that layer because it's its own file and I don't need it in here anymore. So that leaves us with our original image. So I'm like, okay, so I bring this into Photoshop, and I'm like, well, let me just type the word tumbleweed. So I'm gonna type the word tumbleweed in impact because that is our logo. Um, and uh, I'm gonna make it a slightly different color, so let's make it uh, like a reddish, which I didn't do there. I have to highlight it, sometimes you gotta do that. Anybody knows why, let me know. Um, and uh, kind of a light, uh, let's do a little bit of a lighter red, maybe slightly orange, you can't really see it. Uh, uh, okay, okay, here we go, let's make it kind of a brown. Okay, now it's like, well, that's cool, but I also want to give it that, um, the logo, make it into the logo of the Tumbleweed Film Festival, and I do that by using these presets up here, and um, then uh, go to here and I call it a flag and it's going to give it a nice rolling wave and it's pretty good but still obviously it's straight across when the screen is more on a on a, at an angle so we really got to work with the pers perspective we want to change it a little bit but you can't really do it until you can't do it at all until you rasterize it basically flatten this layer because now that the word tumbleweed has a has a warp effect on it you can't edit it anymore you could you could add text to it but you can't put any um a lot of effects on it so we got to flatten it out and the way you do that is you go you make sure the layer is highlighted over here and then you go to layer um i'm sorry uh yeah layer and you want to rasterize it which is down here and you say rasterize type and as you can see it compresses it in the um compresses it and a new little icon shows up over here okay now we can go to edit transform and uh go to perspective and i'm going to make it a little bit fatter on this end where it's closer and a little bit more narrow on this end. Great. And I'm hit apply. And now I'm like, okay, 
perspective's right, but really it doesn't quite look like it's on there. So maybe the first thing I would do is let's bring in that image map so we can associate the texture of the screen with the tumbleweed. And the way you do that is you make sure, again, you make sure uh, tumbleweed is highlighted, and then you go to filter, and then you go to distort, and you go to displace. Some uh, parameters come up, horizontal scale, vertical scale. I'm choosing 10 pixels for each. and But you can mess around with that to see what, what works for you. And um, But this is going to work for us for now. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I have to pick a map. i got to pick a uh, map of the screen too. And then I open it, and as you can see, it immediately changes. And if I go in a little bit here, you can see how it kind of warps the, the, the M. And, you know, you, see, you just see it kind of uh, moving. And the M and the B, it's definitely taking more on. But it's not really giving a projection feel. So that's when we're going to use the blending mode. And um, I'm going to play around with them. You got, you hit multiply and it just makes it darker. But if you hit something like screen, it really does give it a, a, a projection. It has a lot of light shining through it. And it gives it more of a feel of projection, like screen. Or here's light and you can't even see it at all. Color dodge. There we go. That one looks really good, too. So let's go through it one more time, and I'll write up this pretty quickly. But we'll, um, if you get it, then see you later. But if you want one more rundown of it, I'll do it right now. We'll do it with the word uh, film festival. So I got my type tool. I'm going to type um, type the word film festival. And then I'm going to put, I'm also going to warp this one with the, with the preset. Click the preset, call it flag, hit OK. That looks good. I'm going to kind of move it to uh, right up here. Looks good. And then I'm going to um, I'm gonna flatten it down by rasterizing it. So type, rasterize type. And then we're going to change the perspective of it a little bit. Go transform perspective. Again, a little wider on the left side. A little bit more narrow on this side. I keep it the same. There you go. And I'm going to apply that. And now I'm going to give it an image map. Oh, I'm sorry, a displacement map. So I go filter, distort, displace. 10 pixels by 10 pixels. Going to find map of screen 2. Hit open it. And you can see it really kind of does something pretty nice there on on uh, especially this F and the I, and then let's uh let's give it a lighten. Nope, nope, lighten makes it invisible. I'm sorry, we do color dodge, and uh, there we go. So uh, here's my first tutorial on displacement maps. Guarantee there will come a time if you're playing with Photoshop that you will want to do something like this. Stay tuned because soon I'm gonna do a tutorial on displacement maps in. After Effects, which is really cool because not only are you applying the displacement to the to the physical way, the way it physically looks, but you're also going to be applying displacement to the motion. Uh, please leave me your comments. Let me know what you think. If you're clicking on this, I don't want you to waste your time. Hope you're getting something out of it. So uh, let me know and take care.